if you think about how the Bible has influenced the course of man throughout history, it's remarkable. We find that the Bible takes preeminence over all literature in its content, in its unity and structure. There's no other book like this in its content, its unity and its structure. Bible is given now view here. It is salasma, it is sakasati bena deva, anit pot sansan de nikan na velar, velavidi, ita vada. Did you know that there is no book that has sold more copies than the Bible? Bible The Bible has been the instrument in dividing time into two measuring segments: BC, AD. Uh, there's no dates that have been more celebrated than Christian holidays. Like Christmas, Easter, Good Friday. These have been celebrated by people for centuries. Even the non-believing people. More books have been written about the Bible and about Jesus Christ than any other subject in history. Did you know that the gospel message has influenced more writing of music and poetry and drama and art than anything else? Literally every area of culture and life has been affected by the Word of God. Your law and your justice system has been affected by the Bible. This nation this nation, out of all the nations in the world, this nation has been highly affected by the Word of God. <laughs> you see, the Bible has influenced men and mankind and cultures ever since its writing. I cannot stress to you enough the value of the Word of God. The Bible has been translated into more than 1100 languages and dialects. That's more than any other book in the history of man. Also, did you know that the, the Jesus film, the original Jesus film, Jesus Chitrapatiya, a Mulikatipun Jesus Chitrapatiya, has been translated into more languages than any other film ever. So the Word of God has influenced more people than any other written material. That's amazing. To think that 
This book has influenced mankind more than any other book in the world and I have the privilege of having this book. Manushyaat balapayama katikaladhi no anik hema potakadna vada baibaliya me baibaliya maalanga tibima loku vaagya. And I've been called by God to be a steward of this book. Devan Mahansi Mava Khandavalati no me devachne gabada kari daran. That's amazing. Mega puduma dia. That's wonderful. Mega puduma kar dia. That ought to get us excited today. Mega mega ahu elaj mama goda kutwale te patpe no. You know we we come to worship we jump and shout and clap. Abi namaskar karna vela avidi udapai min namas atpudi gahamin namaskar karno. We ought to be get so excited in this class that we're running around the room. Abi eta am kutwale patpe no na me panti kan vata duan no na. Praise God. Swami wants prasanna. And we just start running. We don't know what else to do. Mona karanna dilla bi danna etaram kutuhalaya pat wenawa me ediya han welawi. So if you get really excited and you want to get up and start running, just don't trip over anybody. Oba metana kutuhalaya pat wenawa oba duwan no nan kaage hari patlenne pa wetenne wetenne ay samahar welata. You know, this ought to be such encouragement to us. Meka loku dhairyamak wimak api ekata. And it ought to make us want to read this to get into this book more than ever before kavadagne di aakarata me devachata athul wima apita vadagat wenawa you know what i pray when I, i for me for this class what i want more than anything mama bala purutuna de me panthiya tula me de thamai mama bala purut wenne is if you leave this class with only one thing that happens to you then i'll be happy ඔබ මේ පන්ති කාමන පිටවී යනවා නම් යම් එක දෙයක් හරි ඔබ මනසේ තබාගෙන ලබාගෙන ඒක තමයි මම ලබාගත විචාරය. And you know what that one thing is? මොකද්ද ඒක දෙයේ මොකද්ද? If you fall in greater love with the word of God. ඔබ දේ වචනයට පුදුම ආදරයක් බැඳීමක් ඇති කර ගැනීම. And you have a deeper passion for the word of God than you've ever had before. දෙවන් මහන්සේ කරේ ඉතාමත් තද ආශාවක් ඔබ තුළ ඇති කර ගැනීම. And you want to just get in and know him better. උන් වහන්සේ ඒව දැන ගැනීම, උන් වහන්සේ තවත් වඩ වඩා දැන ගැනීම. Then I'm going to say thank you God. ඔබ කියා මම කියනවා බොහොම ස්තුතියි ස්වාමී. It was a success to be here. ඒක ඉතාමත් සාර්ථකත්වයක් මේ කාලේ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the Bible stands on two words that will illustrate its authenticity uh devachaniya uh authenticity yeah authenticity means its reality its truth it's bible e yatharthatve ar yatharthe sandahan satyatave sandahan karanna odi aakara deyak thiyena so there's two words that you're going to need to know aakara dekak thiyena oba denagathi thuwa two theological terms දේව දේව ධර්මානු කුලව තිබෙන ආකාර දෙකක් Let me see if you know what they are maybe you can help me මම හිතන ඔබ දැනගන්න කියලා මේ දේ ඉගෙන ගන්න වෙලාවේ There's two words that really the the uh, the the uh, reality the authenticity of the word of God stands upon these two words දෙවන් මහන්සිගේ සත්‍යතාවය රැඳී පවතින්නේ මේ කාරණා දෙක මත So what do you think those two words are මේ සත්‍යතාව රැඳී පවතින්නාව දෙකක් love love premium no that's no. not one ඒක නෙමෙයි it's a good word though <laughs> oh you said that oh i'm sorry <laughs> okay i just heard it from over this way okay what did you say biology uh, blood no no medium and salvation redeem no Revelation we're getting close what Okay God breathe what's the other word for that There you go Number 1 Anubhavi Inspiration Anubhavi Very good give me 5 All right Inspiration What's the other word Ad anike mokadda True Holy Spirit no no a different word I'm looking for Inspiration understanding huh understanding understanding no here's the other word revelation authority adipatya inspiration anubhavya 
and authority. So let's put it this way. The revelation of the word of God stands upon the inspiration and authority of God. Okay, this sister gave us that first word. Can you define that word for me? Inspiration. What, can you help me there, sister? Can you define inspiration? You, you gave us part of it. What does it mean again? God breathed. Okay, what do you think that means? How would you, how would you put it in language that just anybody might understand? Okay. So like my understanding is like because God had already started in his heart and he wanted to bring it out and that's how he spoke. Okay. Like he dropped the creation, like he dropped something, he created something. Okay. Yeah, All right. Okay. Somebody else, somebody else, how would you define the word inspiration? Somebody else, how would you define the word inspiration? Somebody else, how would you define inspiration. That's the literal meaning God breathed. That's but, but how will you define the word? God working through man. Okay. Pardon, I'm sorry. Life? Okay. Life. Light, 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 light. Any of you guys over there? Moving of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let me give you some, some thoughts about inspiration. The Bible is more than a work of man. It is the inspiration or inspired by God. Now, the reason I ask you what is inspiration is because it is a doctrine of the church, the inspiration of Scripture. It's a fundamental belief that is held by the evangelical Christians today. Evangelical, not a Christian, Christian, Pava, Megatamai, Padanam Karnadi, Muladar, Mea, Vidyata, Me Anubave. It is held by them as a fact. Own Satya Klesa Mede, Piliganma, Me, 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 Anubave. Okay, let me give you a, a definition. I'll try to break it up, but let me give you a definition, kind of a technical definition for inspiration. So try to write it down. Inspiration is a special act of the Holy Spirit. By which he guided the writers of Scripture. Okay, it's a special, a special act of the Holy Spirit whereby He guided the authors of the Scripture, or the writers of the Scripture. Making sure that their words were free from error and omission. Making sure that their writings were free from error and omission. And that 
that they conveyed the thoughts that the Holy Spirit desired. Shuddha Mahan se ye manasiti bunna ho netan aasha kara vachane oun tulin liyun lebua. Okay, now the the Latin word inspired means inbreathed. Latin baasha vinna kiyanne inbreathed. Inbreathed. Husma gani ma thada husma gani ma. The Greek word combines God and breathe. Greek Masha Vinkino, the Ben Mahansi, Evagin Husmaganima. And so it means inspired or breathed out by God. The Ben Mahansi, we see Husma Helima Akari, Nidison Hankaran, Husma Helima. Now, that which is inspired by God. Is three things. Let me tell you what it is. One, it's written by human hands. Two, it is shaped by some degree by the human thoughts. Okay. And number three, he used human hands. Human words, I mean, number three, human words. So it was written by human hands. It was shaped by human thought. And he used human words. Through the influence of the Holy Spirit, man was prevented from writing anything but what God intended him to write. Now let me put it this way and then I'm going to have to explain what I'm saying here. The Holy Spirit totally controlled the writer so he would be exact and correct in what he was writing. The inspired word of God was totally accurate. That's incredible. Unlike any other book, what you have, what we have before us was breathed out of the very heart of God. But, He used people to do this. See, just like God breathed into man his breath of life, and that man became a living soul, so the Holy Spirit breathed into the writers of the scripture so that they could record the inspired word of God. So now, I, I, let me give you what inspiration doesn't mean. In words, okay. Inspiration was not from the initiative of the writer. In other words, the writer didn't just sit down and say, Oh, I think I'm going to write scripture today. I just feel like writing Bible. I feel like writing the Word of God. The writers were fallible people. In other words, they they were sinful people. They were not perfect. 
उन सारो संपूर्ण ने है only their writings were inspired devanubhavin liyalada vachanaya devanubhavin tibuna now here's the difference menna tibenna wenasa if i were to write a book today which i've written a book before me sahodaraya adu thirne karanam potak liyanda kiyala i might tell you this i might say i was inspired to write a book mama mata anubhavayak tibenawa me de vachane me vachan potak liyanda now you have to understand something obata yak hitanno na me pota liyana yana when i use that word i'm using it differently mama e vachane paavichukana velaya mama baavitha kirima vela mena saakara baavitha karanne there are some people today that say the bible is inspired in the same way that that a great painter was inspired to paint a picture bible e liyan ladda kene vidiyata kenapa kene koha me nada kalakara chitra gunnagu aakarayata or that this book is inspired just like any other writer who is inspired to write something in other words they some people believe that this book is inspired the same way as i would say i was inspired to write my book can it other things other things okay in tell them in english that's a common word me me english bhasha wena hamelema kiyena kenekwa pelambuwa yams deyak karanta kiyena de dan english bhasha e de godak katha karana singhala bhasha wen and in english the word inspired often means just motivated english bhasha wen kiyanne yams kenekwa pelambuwa yams deyak karanta or i have some kind of a fresh idea or thought so i am motivated to put it down mata yamse alut situvilla pamini yamsteya karanta e e tula mama karano yamsteya and there are theologians today that teach that's how the bible came about e devanu de vachanayak pamini e aakarane thamai devadharma pudgalanne hituwa one day these people had a little inspiration a little uh, idea and encouragement to just write this down යම්සි ආනුභාවයක් තිබුණා යම් ලියන්ට ඒ වගේ ධෛර්යමත් කිරීමක් තුල තමයි ඔවුන් ලිව්වේ they were godly men godly people ඔවුන් දේව ආනුභාවය නැන් දේව බයකින් සිටියා මිනිසින් එයා so they wrote their thoughts about god ඔවුන්ගේ මනස තිබුණා සිතුවිලි ඔවුන් ලියන්න පටන් ගත්තා but that's a dangerous teaching ඒක ඇවිල්ලා ඉතමත් භයානක ඉගැන්වීමක් and the problem with that is this මේක තිබෙන ප්‍රශ්නේ මේකයි because i am not fallible like god god is perfect divan mahanse saro sampurnay mam wage varadi tibena pudgalen newe and if it's just my thoughts about god they can be wrong thoughts mama mage situle tibena wanan e eka divan mahanse idire eka varadi situle yenna puluwa and that means how can i trust this book kohomada mama me pota tabala vishwas karanne You see when you pick up the bible and you read the bible you can trust the bible oba kiyawana welawedi oba oba edi adhyane karana welawa obata vishwasayak paminawa ethuli because it's different than any other book ani pottolata wada wenas edi because it's breathed out from god divan mahansegen jeevana husma helimak ethula sidwe and the people he used to write the bible were all under that work of the spirit of god me bible liwaw hama kenekma devanubhavin nata aathman mahanse karnakota gena liwaw putkalin and he protected the words that they wrote down on liwa wachana swamin mahanse rakawa rakshane karana surakshita thabuwa and he made sure that what they wrote down was exactly what he wanted them to say on swamin mahanse prakash kala yutu wachana thamai own live e de vachane yet their emotions their feelings their hearts were being expressed onge tibuna hangi monge situvili hama deyakma me tuna liyanu labuwa liyana velawedi their individual style came out ek ek kena age noyekut hakiyawan dakshatawen e tuna matuna but it was totally protected and the heart of god what they were writing දෙවන් මහන්සිගේ හදවතේ තිබුණාවෝ දේ තමයි ඔවුන් ලියන ලිව්වේ වෙලාවේදී. Let me give you 
an illustration. Most of us here would understand the, the experience of the anointing. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. We know when a preacher says that he is anointed and we know when he's not anointed. Well, let me say this. It's the anointing that releases the inspiration. Words flowed without effort. That's what occurred when the writers wrote the scripture. They were touched by the Holy Spirit. They wrote prophetically. They wrote about things they didn't even understand. They wrote about events they had never seen before. But everything they wrote was correct. And it was guarded by God. Think about it this way. If God could give us Jesus, the living word, free from sin, even though Jesus was born of a woman, don't you think he could give us the word of God, the written word, free from error? Amen. Amen. If the same God could bring forth the living word perfectly, he could, forth, he could bring forth the written word the same way, perfectly. The Holy Spirit came upon Mary, overshadowed her, and she conceived and bore the Son of God. And he was made a human. The Holy Spirit came upon the writers in a similar manner. He overshadowed their minds. And they wrote the words that were given to them. Another illustration would be this. When we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives us utterances of tongues and prophecy. He uses our personality, he uses our vocabulary, our style. He did the same for the writers. That is the reason there are different writing styles and different expressions in different books. Now let me say this before I move on. When you begin to study this book, now listen to me, this is very important you hear this. When you sit down to open up this book and begin to study it, you have a decision to make. And the decision you make will totally affect the way you study the Bible. And that is this. Do you believe that this is the inerrant, inspired word of God? And that you can trust it. If you do, then you can sit down and study this book. If you believe that God has protected his word and brought it forth to you today, 
ദൈവാച്ചനെ ആരക്ഷാക്കള്ള ഉപവിത്ര ഗണാവൈക്കല ഉപ വിശ്വാസക്കന നൗ ദാറ്റ് വിൽ അഫക്ട് ദി വേ യു അപ്രോച്ച് ദി ബൈബിൾ ഉപ ഉപ ഈ ഉപ ബൈബിളിൽ ദിഹ ബലന ആകാരേ വിനാസ് വിനോ നൗ ഐ നോ യു ഗോ ഗോ സേ വെൽ പാസ്റ്റർ ദേർ ഇസ് ഓൾ ദീസ് ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷൻസ് ആൻഡ് വേർഷൻസ് ആൻഡ് പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ഇൻ ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷൻ വാട്ട് അബൌട്ട് ഓൾ ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് മേ തിബെന്ന നോയകുത് പരിവർത്തനയൻ ഗന ഭാഷ പരിവർത്തനയ നോയകുത് പരിവർത്തനയൻ ഗന ഉപ മുണാദ് കിയാണി പാല കോരേ ഐ അഗ്രീ ദേർ ഹാസ് ബീൻ പ്രോബ്ലംസ് നമ്മ വിശ്വാസ കണ്ട നോയകുത് പ്രശ്ന തിബുണ പരിവർത്തനയ കിരീമതുള്ള സിൻസ് മാൻ ഹാസ് ബീൻ translating the scriptures mega mega parivartane karun labuye manushyan misin for instance in your own language pastor was telling me there's been some problems in translation me singala bhasha vedi benna me bible e pawa noyaku parivartane edi noyaku me veradi siduna because the people who originally translated it didn't know the right words to use me parivartane kara pudgalen e yediyutu hari vachana on denagana siti ne e sthana wale yodawanta just like when i was sitting here or standing here and talking to you about inspiration i'm using words that maybe are are, are mis being mistranslated a anubhavagan katha karna velavidi yam sidiyak me api bhavita karana aakarata wada wenas aakarin tibenna puluwa and so there can be problems prashna tibenna puluwa me thula in the translation parivartane thula goda prashna tib in new versions alut me parivartane pamini melavidi but in what was written by those men of god when it was written devan mahanse dunna belavidi e lien ladda putgal liwe 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 belavidi me devach it was entirely completely the inerrant infallible word of god e devan mahanse ke nimerdiwa pamini aawu wachane thamai on liwe and there's two words that theologians use today me deva dharma putgalen aakar dekak kon bhavita karno plenary inspiration and verbal inspiration uh plenary and verbal inspiration two verbal words uh, plenary means complete all of it and ver- and verbal means the words prakash vachita plenary sampurna plenary it's spelled like this p l e n a r y sampurna p l e n a r y plenary plenary session uh, sampurna anikika complete vachita sampurna that means the words were inspired verbal vachita uh, and it's completely the word of god all of it was inspired see there are some people today who say well okay god inspired the concepts of the bible but not the words of the bible divan mahanse the bible ethi benna vata pitawa adahas adahas sankalpa ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു was it inspired but when it talks about science or anything else it wasn't inspired me aatmika deval tul pamanai anubhave tibune nattam yams deval vata pitawa gena katha karna bela avide etula anubhave tibun nahai kela kena now you need to be careful when you hear those words oba e deval e gena asana bela avide oba tika pravesam wenno ne kiyana that presents a lot of problems etula goda prashna mathu wenna puluwa if you don't believe that this book is completely the inspired word of god oba vishwas karan natta me de vachane anubhavin lin ladda vachane then that means that it's up to each of you to determine what is and what is not god's word mokada de vachane kiyanne mokada de vachane noyenne kiyana de obata prashna ekak mathu so let me show you what would happen mokada siddu wenne kiyala oba hitanna ba i'm reading along me sahodara kiyawana i don't like this part i don't think it's inspired Shh. ඔබට හැංග වෙනවා මේ කියවන කොටස ඇවිල්ලා දේවානුභාවයෙන් ලියලා නැහැ කියලා ඔබ ඉරලා පැත්තකට දානවා I'm reading over here up oh, I don't like this 
Devan bawa ni lelai, naya kita lebih tenang, lebih irla fikiran way di, ekoli. And there are men and women today. Ada inu ayah bagi manusian. Who have thrown away so much of the word of God. Mi dewa cinti di bina noy kud kotas ibat kalau di inu. That there's hardly any of it left. Now I won't mention the name, but do you know there's a denomination in the United States? They have said, you know what? This, a lot of what has been taught is a bloody religion. And when it gets to talking about the blood and the crowd, all that kind of stuff, that's, oh, that's repulsive, that's bad. In fact, in their song books, their hymnals, they've taken out every hymn about the blood. And do you know that they claim to be evangelical Christians? They claim to be Christians. But they deny the the plenary or the complete inspiration of the Word of God. Let me tell you something. Every and you can study this out. You you prove me wrong, but I, I want you to study something out. Every major denomination. Christian denomination started on the belief that this was and is the infallible word of God. And that we can trust this message. And then they would go along, they would have Bible institutes, they would begin to train people, and then they would set up their Bible colleges. And as it would go along, they would get more and more, we want higher and higher education. And so they would start bringing in professors that didn't believe the same way. And eventually these denominations would begin to preach against the infallibility of Scripture. And they become a very liberal denomination. And they begin to preach against what the Bible teaches. Now, there's a book that's written a long time ago, back in the 60s, called the, by a man by the name of Harold Linzel. Harold Linzel And it was called A Battle for the Bible. And the, and the whole book was written by a man trying to call liberals to come back to the inspiration and infallibility of scripture. And he, he, he uh, traced the largest denominations in America. He traced how they had gone in their history and where they were today. Now, listen, I would encourage you, if you did the same study right here in this country, you would find the same cycle. And this is where we got to be careful, because it begins in the seminaries. It begins where the leaders are being taught. And if they're taught wrong, it goes into the churches. And eventually, this book becomes nothing more than the writings of your own poets and your own authors, your own, your own writers. 
Katuuran, obagi, obagi kami tu putgilan tulim, yang yang naudi abad pati. Yes. Harold Linzel. Harold Linzel. Linzel. Yeah, Linzel. I hope it's still in pub. Uh, I don't even know if it's still un, in publicity. I don't know if they. Lindsay, I'm sorry. Lindsay. Yeah, Lindsay. Harold Lindsay. That's right, Lindsay. It's called a battle for the Bible. You might be able to find that on the uh, on the on the internet, maybe. It might even be on there. I don't know. I had it in my library that I gave away this summer. <laughs> okay. Two words, very important. Inspiration. And lastly, authority of the scripture. The Bible's inspired. And the Bible is authoritative. The Bible is the authoritative word of God. And it should be taken as the word of God. The Bible is special and sacred and should be held in a separate kind of a relationship, different than any other book. We need to handle it with respect. The Bible has the power to change lives when it is spoken. The Bible transfers life to people. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Verse 12. It tells us this, that the Bible is alive and powerful. You know why I like this book? Because this book is alive. And this book will change your life. It has the power to make a difference in you. You said, well, I read a book one time, not the Bible, but it was a book about the Bible that changed my life. I say, wonderful. <laughs> I've read a lot of books that have affected my life. But the books that affected my life were the ones that were writing the words of the Bible. Because it's the Bible that brings life. Life changing power. And, and you need to understand Revelation 22, verse 18. It tells us that the Bible is complete. And it needs no additions and no subtractions. Folks, you can rely upon this book. You can trust it as true. And this is the authoritative book for life and practice for the Christian. You say, how do I, how should I live as a Christian? What am I supposed to do? I'm a Christian. What am I supposed to do in this area of my life? Go to the book. It'll give you God's heart for those things. The Bible is the expression of God's will for your life. And because of that, this book 
must have priority in our lives. Me pota ani pota loda pramukhapya bento na Bible it. We must diligently read the word. We must diligently study the word of God. Apita uomana avin. It brings us to decision. It brings us to obedience. The Bible is the authoritative word of God for all of my life. Now let me give you an illustration. I believe that this book is so much the word of God. That I will follow its message with my life. And as long as government agrees with this book, I can do what they say. But when they disagree with this book, I have a decision to make. Will I follow this or will I follow man? There are believers in China today who are in jail. Because they chose to believe and to follow the word of God. When their leaders said, you cannot do what this book says. And if you do not denounce this book, you will be imprisoned. Over history, Man has tried to stamp out this book. They've gone into villages and they've taken whole churches and drug them out to the center of the village. And they would take the pastor and make him stand in front of the church. And they would put a gun to his head. And they would say, you either deny that book and denounce God, or I'm going to shoot you deny the word of God. And in front of their own families and in front of their own churches, they would shoot them in the head. Because they said, this is the inspired, the authoritative word of God. Let me tell you folks, you have a choice to make. Because if this is not the authoritative, inspired word of God, I'm not about to die for it. Amen. In fact, if this is not the authoritative word of God, and it's like any other book, we're all stupid if we would give our life for this book. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Why would anybody die for my book? I mean, they'd be crazy. But I, they, we have volumes written about men and women who have given their lives for the proclamation of this word. That's why I ask you today. Are you willing to live for the message of this book? And all of Hemakana. us would say, yeah, 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 amen, amen. But here's the second part of the question. Are you willing to die for the message of this book? That's the tough part. If it is not the word of God that can be trusted, then 
Let's all go home. Let's forget it. Amen? Because you just wasted the last two days. This is a powerful thing to think about. Now, because there has been so many translations and versions and and problems that have come forth. We need to understand that the Holy Spirit has worked hard through the years to protect our word. But the Bible tells us that God gave us His Spirit to be our teacher. And because man has messed with this book, all of us need, need to be good students. And to make sure that we become the best students that we can become. So, when we're reading this book, we know that, wait, there's a word that's not right here. And before we say, oh, see, the Bible's wrong. We need to go and study it and find out what the Bible has said. You know, it's interesting when even scholars have said, well, you know, this particular scientific thing that the Bible said is wrong. It is interesting that when there has been time and scientific development, they've always proven that it was right. Even about issues of food and all in the scripture. And about washing your hands. Did you know there came a time years ago the doctor thought it's not necessary to wash your hands. And so what they found was when women were giving birth, they would deliver a baby, not wash their hands and go deliver another baby. And they had a high mortality rate with the babies. Many died. And they realized that it was because the Bible talked about the importance of, you know, washing their hands after they touched things. Remember? After they touched a dead body, they had to wash their hands and be unclean for a period of time. Now why did God say that? Just to make everybody miserable? It was for their own protection. And when the doctors started washing their hands and sterilizing things, the death rate went way down. You see, God knew what He was talking about. Amen? So, folks, when we begin to study, and we start doing that tomorrow, start learning how to study this book, we have to make a decision. Is that book, is that book the inspired and authoritative word of God, or is it not? Can I trust it? Or is it just any other book? You have a decision to make. I know what I believe. And that's why I'm willing to sacrifice to go all over the world to talk about this book because I believe this is the authoritative, inspired Word of God and I can trust every part of it.
Mama Eka Tamai Mul Loka Noiku Ratawal Tigila Bayanatu Kia Nimeka Devanu Bhavin Adi Patim Dian Ladda Vachinya Kila. Thank you, Lord. Swamini Stuti. For your word. Obahatika Vachina Nisa. Your word is true. Obahati Vachini Sati Vachinya. Your word can be trusted. Your word is my guide for faith and practice. I can come to it and I can trust what it says. Thank you for this book. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, you can come back at 2 o'clock, right? 2?